Busendorfer has long been regarded as one of the world's greatest pianos. Many people all across the world are big fans of Busendorfer's uh, distinctive sound, and over the years, Busendorfer has collected a massive amount of artists and musicians who are loyal followers of the company. Today I thought I would do a video on the history of Busendorfer, since as one of the world's, world's oldest piano manufacturers, it has a long, rich, and interesting history. The company of Busendorfer was founded in 1828 in Austria by a man named Ignaz Busendorfer. Mr. Busendorfer actually worked as an apprentice for the Joseph Broadman Piano Company, and in 1828 he actually acquired the Broadman Workshop, which is when the company was founded. Busendorfer began making great pianos from the very beginning, since only two years after the company was founded in 1830, Busendorfer pianos gained the title of being the official piano for the Emperor of Austria. How cool is that? What's really cool to me is that some Busendorfers from this time period actually still exist. There is a square piano that is in original, unrestored state from 1828, and another cool thing is that one of the earliest grands made by Busendorfer, signed by Mr. Ignaz Busendorfer himself, is actually in a concert hall in Vienna, and it's actually performed on on a regular basis, which I think is pretty cool. In the year 1909, a man by the name of Karl Hutestrasser purchased the Busendorfer company. And around the same time period, a pianist and composer by the name of Ferruccio Busoni came to Bosendorfer with a very special request. He wanted the company to make a very special piano for him that actually had nine extra bass notes at the end of the piano. He wanted a piano like this so that he could uh, transcribe works for, um, by Bach that were originally written for pipe organ, which has 32-foot organ stops that play notes below the lowest key of a piano, which on the standard piano is A0. Busendorfer obliged, and uh, the piano that they ended up creating was so wonderful and it worked so well that it became part of the regular Busendorfer lineup, and it is now known today as the 290, or the Imperial Grand. The extra keys on modern Imperial Grand pianos are painted, uh, the tops of them are painted black, but the fronts are still painted white, which is kind of annoying to me, but it's what Busendorfer does. In the early days of the Imperial Grand, there was actually a wooden flap that would cover the, uh, the keys and would kind of look like an extension of your normal cheek block. And this, was, this is done to uh, help orient the player because if you sat down at the piano and the keys were painted white, you'd be pretty confused as to where middle C was and you have to be, is this middle C? No, that's middle C. Okay, now I can start playing. The Imperial Grand isn't the only Busendorfer piano that has extra keys. The, uh, the 225 also has four extra keys down at the bass end, so Busendorfer is one of the few piano manufacturers that has extra keys on their pianos. Another cool thing about Busendorfer is that the rims are constructed in a much different way than normal pianos are made. Um, in a piano such as, for example, the Steinway that I'm sitting behind, the rim is formed of many veneers of wood that are then steamed and bent into shape around a form, which then creates the rim of the piano. However, Busendorfer does it much differently. They actually make their rims out of solid pieces of spruce, which are then jointed together. And because of this, their uh, Busendorfer pianos sound different, and they also can look a bit different than other pianos. Uh, on many models of Busendorfer pianos, there is an odd little crick down at the corner of the rim where it curves around down at the tail of the piano. And if you look at some model Busendorfers, you'll see, particularly the 290 is the one I know of, it, uh, it, instead of just gently curving around, there's actually like a, a joint, and that is where two pieces of spruce are jointed together. Another interesting property about the spruce rim is that it actually helps, uh, you know, uh, amplify the sound and magnify it rather than only reflect it as a piano such as the Steinway would do. Uh, Spruce is very good at uh, amplifying uh, sound waves and so therefore when you play a Bosenerfer not only does the soundboard vibrate along with the strings and helps amplify the sound, the rim does as well. And it's uh, a theory that this is perhaps why Bosenerfer has their unique uh, clean crystalline sound with a warm pure bass. This is perhaps one of the reasons why because the rim is constructed in a different way. Another interesting thing about Busendorfer pianos is that the strings in the uh, tenor and treble are individually uh, strung, which means that instead of um, looping around the hitch pin and having one piece of wire form two different strings, each piece of wire is its own separate string, which is pretty cool. In 1966, the Busendorfer company changed hands once again, this time being bought by Kimball Pianos. However, Kimball didn't keep the company very long, and in 2002, when they exited the piano business, they sold Busendorfer once again, 
This time, Boosnerfer was sold to one of Austria's largest banks. However, the bank decided it didn't really want uh, Boosnerfer, and it was actually having financial troubles. So in 2008, Boosnerfer was sold for the final time to Yamaha. The sale to Yamaha was quite controversial. Many people were afraid that the Japanese company would take Busendorfer and make the Busendorfer pianos like the Yamaha pianos, or completely just get rid of Busendorfer if the company wasn't profitable enough. But however, none of that turned out to be true, and if anything, Busendorfer pianos have become better than ever. Yamaha hasn't altered the way Busendorfer makes their pianos or the location where they have been made, and modern Busendorfer pianos are very, very highly refined. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video about the Busendorfer Piano Company. They're a very, very interesting company. They've been around for a very long time, and they make absolutely excellent pianos. I, for one, am a big fan of their pianos. I really, really love the actions they put in their pianos. They're so light, and they're perfectly regulated every time I play on a brand new Busendorfer. It's absolutely incredible. I also really love the sound of a brand new Busendorfer as well. At the 2016 NAMM show, I played on the 280 VC model they had there, which probably was one of the best pianos that I have ever played on in my life. Yes, that is a big statement, but go check out that video and you'll see what I mean. It's an absolutely amazing piano. They put a lot of time and effort into regulating and voicing that piano since it was the debut model of that piano, so it turned out exceptionally well. I personally love that really warm sound that piano had, and uh, other 280 VCs I've played on don't quite have that warm sound, but they still have a very pure sound and a very clean sound. And if you wanted a piano that was going to be going into, say, an orchestra that had lots of other things happening at once, and you wanted the piano to be really clean and clear, a booster for piano would be definitely one of the ways to go. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video and you found it entertaining and interesting and informative and all of the above. Uh, you can go check out my channel. I have lots of videos about pianos. I have lots of videos about Busendorfers. Not only do I have videos about the 280 VC, I also have videos about the 290 VC, which is a super cool piano as well. So you can go check out that stuff. And if you think it's uh, subscribe worthy, uh, thank you for subscribing. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.